Okay, we have we have gathered, we have begun. Thank you for joining us and uh, special uh, heart connection to those that are also able to be here in person on the Zoom. I know now that feels like in person, um, but it's really sweet to not just be talking to myself. <laughs> That's very sweet actually. <laughs> All right, so um, I, I've been reflecting lately on this phrase, self-care, self-care. And I recently said to a friend, um, just some exchanges, that I'm interested in cultivating, and I think of self-care these days, as increasing my capacity to care rather than increasing my capacity to self. <laughs> so sometimes self-care can take the flavor um, or lean towards reinforcing and comforting this self. And... Uh, that is important and that's part of the picture that there is this being, this body, this aging, sickness, grieving, uh, joyous, individual beingness that we are all living. Um, and when we cultivate insight, we see that just trying to constantly comfort and make things uh, comfortable for this self leads to more suffering. It's not liberating. And the wisdom also shows us that this me, this self, is not a separate, isolated entity at all. <laughs> Completely interdependent with, with all things, infinitely conditioned and constantly changing. And uh, so if I just pursue self-care to fortify and protect and comfort myself, that is delusion and it is unskillful and will lead to um, more suffering for myself and others. And so if we can get curious about self-care, what is self-care that cultivates more capacity within this heart, body, mind, more capacity to care for self and others and all beings? And in this way, we're fostering our interconnectedness and our our capacity. Um, and this this does require taking care of ourselves. Having, you know, um, previously, um, I've given a couple talks recently on rest and um, the importance of that. And this is based on the work of um, Trisha, Trisha Hersey. Uh, who wrote the book Rest as Resistance. Rest is Resistance. And uh, she also founded the NAP Ministry, which is an organization that advocates for rest as a form of reparations and a pathway for ancestral healing and connection. And um, her work is really important in... Uh, she also talks about... Mm, the colonial mm, industrial complex that keeps us working and pushing and driving and individualism and um, uh, all these things and and how to, how to um, create rest as resistance to that whole paradigm. And uh, so this is Tricia Hershey's work. Um, and uh, I recommend you 
do check her out. She's got lots of YouTube talks and website, etc. I'll put the link down below to her work. Um, but one of the things I saw recently, a post um, from a Dr. Rosales Meza, M-E-Z-A, I'll put her link below as well. She defines herself as a seer, a medicine woman, um, and has a PhD in psychology, counseling psychology. Uh, and she recently posted that the obsession with self-care during a genocide is deeply colonial. And she questions, why do you think they taught you that? She says, why, you know, to question, why are we taught to just take care of ourselves? <laughs> just take care of yourself. Because then we won't fight back and we won't speak up and we won't act out in act in compassionate action ways is and it really got me thinking I was like whoa it kind of took me aback like uh that's pretty thought-provoking uh she also said um what good what good is your personal healing if the world you live in is not free that personal wellness without collective liberation means nothing wow and this might ring a bell for some of us in terms of a the bodhisattva vow of you know that i will continue to strive to cultivate and to awaken and cultivate compassion and wisdom for the freedom the liberation of all beings um, so this is, you know, what good is my personal healing if, if the world we live in is not free, which of course we know it is not. So what does it mean to balance these perspectives of Trisha Hershey teaching about, uh, as rest as being a, a, a decolonial practice? to and and then um this other teacher dr meza you know questioning like how much of that paradigm of self-care that is only focused on this this self um she's saying this is deeply colonial so this is very interesting <laughs> and important for us to reflect on and so this, to, to look at self-care as uh, how much care of this self is needed for me to care more, for me to engage more in the world. You know, both of these are necessary and requires discernment and curiosity, you know, it, um, Because we can when we're in a place of privilege, we can choose to turn it off and tune it out and say that's enough, or I can't deal with this anymore, or I can't don't want to see that anymore. And this is obviously coming from a place of privilege that we can make these choices if we're in that position. So what you know, just to get curious for yourself, are you taking care of your energy, your body, your nourishment, your rest, your safety? These are, uh, we've talked about this before, of prerequisites. Um, do you have health care accessible? Do you have safe housing? Do you have um, enough nourishment and food, etc.? So these aspects need to happen and to really look, am I getting enough rest? Am I taking care of my heart, body, mind? So that, not just so that I can be more comfortable, <laughs> so that I can have energy and clarity and wisdom 
and wise response to the suffering of the world. Um, in a, another meditation group that we had this morning, um, we've been studying sukha, uh, which is mm, it's the opposite of dukkha. So uh, sukha is loosely and not very helpfully often translated as happiness. Uh, <laughs> it makes me wince. I could just notice. And um, but really, it's much more subtle and deep than our con usual concept of happiness. And uh, so we've been studying this book, Happiness by Matthew Ricard. And uh, in this, uh, he talks about um, sukha, uh, this inner quality of as being a boundless capacity. So we want to be able to cultivate the kind of care that develops our boundless capacity to care for others, to let care flow through us from the boundless source of awareness. Um, and this, this word capacity shows up again in something, uh, that I shared on social media, uh, from, uh, Howard Zinn, who is, um, was, has passed, uh, a Jewish American historian, playwright, philosopher, socialist, intellectual, and World War II veteran, among other things. Uh, in short, a, a peace activist, I would say. Um, and Howard Zinn said this, to be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It is based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty, but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, kindness. He goes on, what we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. If we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. And if we remember those times and places, and they are so many, there are so many, where people have behaved magnificently. This gives us energy to act. And at least the possibility of sending this spinning top of a world in a different direction. And if we do act in however small a way, which is so lovely, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future because the future is an infinite succession of presents, present moments. And to live now as we think human beings should live in defiance of all that is bad around us is itself a marvelous victory. <sighs> so he's speaking here about our, about this capacity which we need to cultivate and grow and rest into and connect to um, that can hold the 10,000 sorrows and the 10,000 joys and mm, can give a cultivate our ability to respond and to create the world that we all um, want to be a part of this infinite succession of presents that, that create our future in however small a way. <clears throat> Beautiful, so helpful at, at these times. Um, I don't think I mentioned this. And then there was, there was another, like, this is the way things 
show up when you're looking <laughs> all these synchronicities and then there's this other feminist writer um and scholar who works at the intersection of feminist queer and race studies named sarah ahmad um and she um has a blog called feminist killjoys i'll put the link below for that uh she said there are times when we cannot be at peace with ourselves you know relating to self-care is it just always trying to comfort and feel really good in ourselves and she's saying hmm maybe not that there are times when we cannot be at peace with ourselves there are times when we should not be at peace with ourselves and we are in those times it is not the time to be silent nor at peace with ourselves wow yeah so i would you know could debate the language used there because i think that it actually is this mm, sukha this deep inner capacity that is related to peace that gives us the ability to to respond um in these times when we um, should not be silent. Yeah, so um, um, I think that's enough about these thoughts. Yeah, I mean, In the hospice training I was in last week, um, we're coming towards the end of this pretty long series, and uh, we were talking about self-care as hospice volunteers. Again, self-care. Oh, my goodness. And um, they put up these uh, big pieces of paper on the wall, and uh, there were four of them, and one was spiritual, physical social and emotional and um we all kind of went around and put things on the different pieces of paper or w first we wrote five things and then put them where where they thought we thought they fit so it might be helpful or interesting or mm, onward leading for you to reflect on what are five places practices people, um, doings or not doings that nurture your capacity. And rest may be one of them. It's definitely one of mine. Um, I also put tequila and Netflix on the board just to freak out the hospice people. But um, because I think sometimes self-care means like, you just need to check out for a bit intentionally, not like not abusing substances, but, you know, just, yeah, I like to keep it real, as you know. So, um, yeah, so to reflect, what are, what are ways that, and are you actually making time and space for those in your life to nurture this being so that we have more capacity to care to act to respond in the dharma uh one of the brahma viharas the the abodes of the heart the aware heart is karuna which means compassion and it's understood that Compassion is not just uh, nice thoughts, it's actions, it's responding to the suffering we see in the world and around us and with each other and within ourselves. It's an, it's an action. It's also a meditation, which is an action. Uh, and... I think I dropped a thread there. Um, compassion, Karuna, action. Um, yeah, and so 
one of the practices that well, when I was sitting a three month retreat at the Insight Meditation Society, uh, this was taught by Jill Shepherd. And it was a Karuna meditation to cultivate the capacity to respond to suffering. And uh, she gives it a, a, a really helpful hmm, spin comes to mind, but it's not that like a, hmm, she expands the the practice a little bit in a way that I find very helpful. And so usually the Karuna meditation, the compassion meditation is one phrase that acknowledges the suffering of ourselves or others and cultivates the wish for that suffering to end. And um, sometimes that can be feel a little inaccessible or too intense if we're experiencing a lot of suffering or the beings that we're bringing into awareness is it's um so big that we kind of uh numb out a little bit uh so she has this process which um I find helpful and it, it can be summarized in these four words and then we'll go through this practice together it's aware care release peace and uh so it's aware care release peace you can it's a nice easy easy way to remember it nice little rhyming words and everything well done, Jill. Jill Shepherd, that is. Okay. So maybe I'll just um I think we'll just go through this uh, uh, practice and the the filling out of it, the explanation of it will come as we do it. Um let me just see if there's anything I want to say about it before. No, I don't think so. So it's a way into the practice that's a little more spacious and uh, tender. It's kind of like titrating, like um, touching into the suffering and not uh, feeling overwhelmed by it, hopefully. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so adjusting your space and your posture for this practice. This is a, a heart cultivation practice. And so we begin by really setting up some support and comfort in your environment. Make sure that, uh, you know, adjust if you need any any other warmth or cushion or adjustment of your lighting. <clears throat> mm. And I think uh, tonight we'll practice this meditation with ourselves and then with others. And so we begin with this attitude of self-care, um, of adjusting our posture, our bringing in other support so that we're being gentle and kind with our with our body with our being
It can be helpful with these heart cultivation practices if you are feeling a heartache at this time to add some touch. So you might place a hand at your heart center, just giving some caring touch. Or a hand at the belly. Relaxing and softening the belly. One of my favorite self-touching um, that relates to self-care and self-compassion is uh, just holding my face. Like this, it kind of feels like a, I don't know, for me, it connects to like a grandparent holding you, a little child's face. So if touch is helpful to you, you're welcome to add that to any time to this practice. And then we begin just by resting into the present moment. So resting your eyes away from distractions. Widening the forehead, releasing Worries and tensions that contract there in the center. Noticing if there's tension in the area of the jaw or mouth that isn't helpful right now. And can you just let some ease come to the face? Letting the shoulders slide down away from the earlobes as the muscles of the neck lengthen. And relax. Feeling the support of the chair or couch if your back is resting on something or under the hips if you're kneeling or sitting on a cushion. See if you can rest into that support. And again, as we're cultivating these um, tender, aware heart practices, connected heart, we can check into the areas of the heart center and the belly center, and these areas where we're all feeling some heartache at this time and some fear, and notice if that's held or needs some touch or some softening. Just meeting it with kind awareness. As you would comfort and hold anyone that's suffering, comfort and hold yourself.
And then really feeling the sensations of the earth holding you, supporting you. See if you can rest into that support with it, in relationship with it. As Trisha Hershey teaches us as a as an act of rebellion, as an act of resistance, letting your nervous system and your heart, body, mind rest into present moment. That's all practice. Just resting and relaxing to whatever degree is possible for a few minutes in silence together before we go on. And if you notice in the times of silence that habit tension picks up in the body or in the mind or both, when it's noticed with kind awareness, just inviting rest again. Now we'll begin to move into this Karuna Bhavana practice, this cultivation of compassion practice. And we'll begin tonight with ourselves, just touching gently into the awareness of some suffering, some heartache, some pain could be physical, mental, emotional, could be um, in your in your body, in your interpersonal relationships, or it could be uh, more of a global heartache that's being experienced. And then the per first part of this practice is aware. I am aware of this pain. I am aware of this pain. And really test this out. Is this true? Am I really aware of this pain? Or am I just paying lip service to it? Like, yeah, I know. Can you really...
meet that with awareness. I am aware of this pain. And if it's too intense, just touching into it and then back to the sensations of the ground. Or open your eyes and release the practice. You can always come back to it. And let's just be here together for a few moments. I am aware of this pain. Notice that we don't need to go into the backstory or the cause or blame. Just let yourself really know with awareness of this pain. And as you rest with it, different things might arise, just let what wants to be known come through. And the next part of the practice is care. I care about this pain. I care about this pain. And see, is that is that true? Or do I just want to get rid of it? Am I caring about it just enough to for it to go away? And again, just for short periods of time, if it's too intense, can you just be with care about this pain, aware and care? This might be a place where that touch is helpful, the hand to the heart, caring touch or uh, hugging. We're aware of this pain and practicing growing our capacity to care about this pain. And the next part of the practice is release. Touching into the deep heart wish for the ending of that dukkha, for the may this pain release. May this pain release. We're not pushing it away, but we're just touching into that deep wish for peace, for safety, 
for care. May this pain release. aware of this pain, I care about this pain, may this pain release and the last part of this practice is peace, may I know peace So here we consciously, with intention, remember, visualize, imagine, feel that potential. Remember that you have known peace and freedom from suffering. Remember that's possible for you. Even if the mind is jumping in with contradictions or stories or no, not really. We're cultivating this. May I know peace. Remember what that feels like in the body. And we expand our capacity to remember peace. Remember what it feels like in the belly, in the heart. And um, these Brahma Vihara practices are also called purification practices. So it's natural mm, that tension might arise in the practice or mm, the opposite of compassion might be showing up. And we continue with the practice, trust the practice. And now taking a slightly deeper releasing, relaxing breath and just let go of that practice for now. Reconnect with the sensations of the ground. If you need to open your eyes or place a hand at the heart before we continue, just take a moment to take care of yourself. Okay, and now we're going to cultivate this heart practice in relationship with others. And 
friend. So you could choose one person that you know that is experiencing suffering at this time. It may be a group of people. It may be um, other beings that are um, beings of the earth that are suffering. It's like uh, whoever arises in your awareness is standing in for all those that the heart knows it are experiencing suffering. You don't have to um, worry too much about choosing the right person. So whoever has arisen in awareness Let's cultivate this practice, aware, care, release, peace. So the first part, I am aware of this pain. Really bringing into heart, body, mind, awareness, the pain that someone else is experiencing. And see, when we're, when we say I'm aware of this pain, are we is, is that true, or am I just kind of giving it a nod, just paying lip service to it? This may be too intense. You can just titrate, just touch into it, and then move back. I am aware of this pain. And then I care about this pain. I care about this pain. Try not to disconnect from your own heart, body, mind in this present moment. We're cultivating mm, this relationship within ourselves. And then the third part, may this pain release. Staying connected with your own heart, body. Awake awareness in relationship to others that are suffering and really touching into this deep wish, may this pain release, may you be free from this suffering. And the last part of the practice, may you know peace. Feel that potential 
consciously imagine or visualize, feel it in your heart's awareness. As Howard Zinn reminded us, that this future peace is made up of this infinite su succession of present moments. that it's not foolishly romantic to remember many times and places where people have behaved magnificently. May you know peace. May you know peace. Aware, care, release, peace. May I, may you, may all beings be free from suffering. Just transition gently from that practice. Again, you might find touch helpful, a hand at the heart, or holding your face, or giving yourself a hug. Mm. Yeah, so. May we all practice this self-care that cultivates our capacity to act and to respond in however small a way. Um, if you're practicing with us on the YouTube channel, please check the links below to the uh, teachers that I mentioned. Um, and there'll also be a link there for the New Year's retreat that's coming up in person in um, Guelph, Ontario, or Southern Ontario area. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you for practicing with us. <laughs>